a beautiful morning at the lake. I have two deltas on my roof, which is pretty rare. Uh, forgive the noise of the air pump on the stand-up paddleboard. Uh, today, we're going to talk about something. Uh, over the past couple years, I've been compiling a list of 100 tips for sea kayakers. Uh, and they're going to get work their way into a book at some point, but I'm going to share 10 of them with you today. Let's go. Topic. Today's topic. I told him on told you on top of the van, weren't you paying attention? You were like 20 feet away and your mouth was pointing the other way. And that guy had the air pump going. And the guy had Today's the topic going. is that over the past couple years I've been compiling a list of 100 that's not 100, that's 5. Of 100 <laughs> tips for kayakers, sea kayakers in particular. Okay. And this is 10 of them. Okay. Because the list, the list of a hundred, which I've been sitting on and I tweak it occasionally, um, is going to end up in a book someplace, but I haven't sure, haven't figured out where, and I haven't figured out when. And so I thought it was a good one to sort of pull ten out of, because I could do the hundred, but it would take forever. That would be a really long video. Wear gloves to protect you from the sun, which is what these are or to protect you from the cold, which is what these are, pogies. I also have a pair of these guys, but I don't like them as much as pogies. Um, don't wear gloves to protect yourself from blisters. If you're getting blisters, it's because you're holding on too tight. Paddle with loose fingers. In fact, everything you do in a boat should be relaxed. Nothing should be burly. We're not digging in. That's not sea kayak. This is sea kayak. If something hurts, if something's tight, if you're getting blisters, again, if you're getting blisters, uh, something's wrong. You're holding on too tight. You're working too hard. You going first? Or you want me to go first? You're going first. No, I'm going first. You want me to do it in a particular way? Yeah. You do you, boo. Since I'm still getting a feel for the edging in this boat. Nope, too wide. We're gonna do it. Not enough speed. This boat definitely doesn't turn as sharp as the other or I'm just not used to it yet. Okay, if you are paddling in a group and you are the most experienced paddler. It is your job to latch on to the least experienced paddler. You are not going to want to do this because they're going to be paddling slow, but they're going to be nervous. They're going to be intimidated. You need to make sure that the group is accommodating that person's comfort level because that person will easily get steamrolled. And that's a good role for you as the most experienced paddler in the group. Take care of those new paddlers. Okay, don't tolerate numbness don't tolerate blisters johnny what causes blisters on your hands when you're paddling friction yeah and how do we get that paddling over gripping yeah from holding on too tight uh and so this was another tip is paddle with relaxed hands if you don't paddle with relaxed hands you get blisters and don't tolerate numbness and numbness in your toes numbness in your legs numbness in your bottom is all seating and positioning problems or padding problems what if your feet are permanently numb? That I can't fix. Okay. Uh, permanently numb feet I can't fix. Right. Okay, a few more. This one it should come as no surprise because it's me. Uh, do you think you know the forward stroke? You probably don't know the forward stroke. <laughs> uh, take lessons with someone, read a book, uh, or send me a video of your forward stroke and I'll help you with it. Most people need to work on their forward stroke. I continually work on my forward stroke. Uh, because it can always be tweaked and things like that. So keep working on your forward stroke. Draw strokes too, they're important. Not as important as forward strokes. Car racks confuse the heck out of paddlers. Not so much cyclists, but paddlers. And there are a couple of ways that you can put 
a boat on the roof of a car. You could put a boat in a J cradle where the boat sits on its side, or you can put the boat in a flat cradle where the boat sits flat. And J cradles are less expensive, so they're the most popular, but they are really difficult on tall vehicles because you have to lift the boat above the height of the vehicle, above the right height of the base rack, above the lip of the J, they can be tough. So, unless you are really pinched for space on the roof of your vehicle, avoid J cradles on like SUVs where your boats are gonna do better sitting flat. Um, I have a J cradle on my little Toyota. I have flat cradles on my van or when I had an SUV. So J cradles are for low cars. Flat cradles are best. You can use them on low cars, but they're a great option for taller vehicles like SUVs or vans. Another one that I talk a lot about is investing a great paddle. Uh, the lighter your paddle, the less weight you're carrying. A light paddle is awesome. A heavy paddle is horrible. Unfortunately, that equates to an expensive paddle is light and a cheap paddle is horrible. So spend a little bit more than you think you were going to on your paddle. But really, it doesn't have to be that much more. The paddle that I use for students is like 130 bucks and is not bad. The next one up from that is two and change. This is three and change or maybe four, four. And your Caliste is four plus, so. Really, is the Kamano, is that much? The carbon Kamano is 400? I think it is. Maybe it's just under. I thought it was just that, under. Maybe just under. Still a lot of money, but it's worth it. Learn the weather. Learn what the weather, particularly in your area, because it can be specific to your area, but learn what the weather looks like. Learn what it looks like when it's getting bad. So uh, I wear a watch with a barometer. When I really need it, I have a VHF radio for weather. I use apps on my phone like everyone else does, but learn when, sorry. <laughs> Learn, learn when weather, what it looks like when the weather is getting bad so you can react accordingly. Super, 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 super important. How important? Super. Super important. Dress for the water temperature, not the air temperature. So right now the lake that I'm paddling in, the water temperature is like bathtub 70s. Oh yeah. At least mid 70s, right? So I'm wearing a pair of light shorts and a, some protective shirt. But when it starts to get cold, I'll start adding layers. I'll go to warmer base layers uh, on the bottom. I'll go to a shell jacket on the top. I'll uh, eventually just switch up to my dry suit. But it's all going by water temperature, not air temperature. A lot of organizations will use the, uh, the number of the combined temperature of 125 degrees for water and air. Uh, if you're below a combined 125, then you need to start worrying about water temperatures and things like that. Um, I think it's a good idea to be thinking about water temperature all the time. I've even started carrying a thermometer just so that we don't then debate. Hey, 70s? 80s? It could easily be 80 degrees. Good. And finally, take time to savor the little things. The swell of the water, the raindrops, the breeze, the sound of the birds. That's why we're out here. Have fun. I spend a lot of time thinking about how I'm paddling, but it's important to also take time to just experience paddling and have fun with it. Okay, that's my list. 10 tips for sea kayakers. If that was helpful, hit like, hit subscribe. It would help me out a lot. Uh, some things that are coming up, I'm doing a lot of work on the van, so there'll be some van update videos coming. Uh, if there's something you want to see, give me a note down below in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you outside.